WNIT's programming has been underwritten by Peacock and Company. Need more space? Why not add a sunroom, porch, or deck? Your home remodeled. Imagine the possibilities. Kitchens, baths, additions. Peacock and Company. Located on Mishawaka Avenue in South Bend. Good evening and welcome once again to Ask an Expert. I'm Gary Sieber and tonight's program is all about home remodeling. Is your kitchen outdated? Could a worn out bathroom maybe use a facelift perhaps? As there are um, different traits that you have to keep in mind when you're working with them. But um, you know, some woods are harder. The harder the wood, it tends to split more. So you just have to be aware of what product you're working with. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm always amazed at you guys. You know, I, I really have this, I can't do it. Uh, so I have this great admiration for anyone who actually knows what they're doing. One of the things is uh, the ways that you guys can conserve uh, the amount of material that you're using up. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be making, you know, they always say measure twice, cut once. <laughs> I'm sort of the opposite of that. Uh, so what, what you do really kind of amazes me. Do you have any tricks that, uh, that you might share with people on, on just kind of how to, you know, be a little bit better about that? Um, just plan ahead. I think it goes back to planning. Um, you can order different lengths of your drywall. So if you want to hang drywall in a room, you can order a 10 foot sheet versus an eight foot sheet. Um, so just being conscientious of what you're doing and you can buy materials that tend to conserve. Um, also just the length of boards when you are trimming a door. Um, it's a seven foot board is normally going to work pretty well, so you don't need to buy an eight foot board mm -hmm. and waste a foot. I don't know how so you can keep it all straight. I'm, <laughs> I'm terrible with that stuff. But I'm glad somebody knows how to do it. Which maybe brings us to the next question, which is how do you know when it's time to not do it yourself and call a professional? Um, I know a lot of it has to do with your own ability and to some degree with your ego. <laughs> In my case, it's like I have to actually admit I can't do this. But uh, do you have any advice to people, uh, Scott, on, on when they really need to get some professional help? Before you go to the divorce attorney. <laughs> attorney. <laughs> Certainly before that. We, we get a lot of calls that way, where a husband has started a project, it sat there for months and uh, still not completed. They ask us if we're interested. We're not, because it's already a mess. But you got to plan and, and talk to professionals. Go to Lowe's or go to Menards or call us. We'll be happy to consult and help you any way we can. Mm -hmm. But guys, including myself, aren't quite that way. We, we like to just get in and do it. Mm -hmm. And that's when we get in trouble. Yeah. Planning is number one. Yeah. Um, and to do that, uh, you know, some people may have some concern about how much it's going to cost me and when is it going to start to cost me. So again, I'll go back to where I started with Brian. If I come in as a customer and I sit down, mm -hmm. At what point, you know, do you, uh, do you, I mean, do you do a sort of a, an initial assessment and all that sort of thing? And, and at what point do then do you start getting into the, to the cost here? Me? Yeah, anyone. It's, it's something we really push our designers on, and that is to get a budget. Talk to people. It's hard to get a budget out of people. We're all the same. But you've got to get realistic, and you'll save time that way. And if you give us a budget or give Brian or give Jennifer the budget, then they can automatically zero in on what lines might be best, that might fit in, what what kind of flooring might fit in, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So mm -hmm. think- uh, Allie, on the, uh, on the phone, am I pronouncing that right? Are you there? Hello? Phone trouble tonight. <laughs> Allie, are you there? Well, I can hear you trying to talk, but it sounds like uh, there's a, an interface problem. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, so we'll keep trying to get that fixed. Uh, Allie's question, as I understand, is about retractable shelves, uh, something that I don't know a whole lot about. But uh, Kyle, maybe you can take that one. Uh, hmm. Retractable shelves, is that in these days? The, I'm assuming she's talking about the type of um, shelving that we might find in a cabinet where it's on slides and it'll, dry, or it'll roll out. Mm -hmm. um, they are becoming more and more popular. As, as space savers, maybe as, in a walk-in closet? Especially in a kitchen where you have a, a very deep cabinet and you find that you lose a lot of stuff at the back of the cabinet, um, especially in like the bigger pantry type of cabinets um, where the, drawer, the whole shelf will slide out and you'll be able to see the whole shelf um, there before you because there will be full extension slides so you'll be able to see to the very back of that shelf. Mm -hmm. and. Um, 
they're becoming more and more popular. There are very few kitchens that I don't have one or, or two at least cabinets that have something like that. How are they in terms of wear and tear? Or do, they, do they last a long time? They're very durable. The slides that we use with our cabinets are, are very durable, and um, I haven't ever had a problem with them. Yeah, and if somebody's looking at uh, cabinetry, and I know there's a real art to this, but uh, if they're looking for a particular, should they look for a, a particular kind of, of pull-out drawer, and, you know, one that uses a particular kind of uh, ball bearings or slides or what? There are any number of different slides. Um, ball bearing are very good. Um, and of course, the better the slide, probably the better the cabinet and the higher the cost. So you gotta kind of balance out the pros and cons of your project and where you wanna spend your money. But um, good slides usually indicate that probably the cabinet's also a better cabinet. Part of which goes back to what Scott was saying earlier about you need to know what your budget is going in. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. that that are they're somewhat custom, maybe going around a a commode mm -hmm. or you know in a corner that sort of thing that's where layout comes in that probably the most difficult thing about tile is layout because um, you, you're gonna have to cut some of the tiles if you ha if you can avoid having to cut a circle out of a tile that uh, really is a lot easier to cut a u-shape out of the side of a tile than a circle in the middle of a tile so um, you know, layout is really key when and it comes you, to tile. Do you bring a special uh, ceramic saw with you to do that? We do. We have a wet saw so that it doesn't produce dust, mm -hmm. um, and that'll just recirculate the water. But um, you can't really do tile effectively without a proper wet saw. Yeah. Are, are, uh, are uh, there are different qualities of tiles out there? I mean, uh, you know, some that are, you know, better to work with than others or last longer, or are they all pretty much ceramic tile is just, you know... A lot the same. Well, you will notice a difference in some of the tiles. Just when you're cutting it, you can tell if it's a harder tile or a softer tile, but it's really hard to say when you're just looking at a tile at a tile store, whether it's harder or softer. Um, when I get a box of tile, I couldn't tell you until after I'm working with it whether it's a, a hard tile or a soft tile. Well, I, I just admire your ability. Anyone who can do ceramic tile, and I say that with no grout. Anyway, <laughs> Paul, you're on the air. Go ahead with your question on uh, Ask an Expert. Hi. Uh, I have a project I've been working on. I have a bathroom that has a terrazzo shower base, and it's leaking into a floor below. I also have a tile flooring, and I've had a few people come out and take a look at it, and I've been told I need a number of different subcontractors to really get this problem resolved. And I'm wondering if your company can take care of something like this just in one fell swoop. Right. Before you answer the question, let me just give you the old caveat, which is almost like the doctor shows that we do. Uh, it's hard to tell unless they actually look at it, right? But right. give it your best shot there, Scott. What does he mean, take care of? Take care of the leak or rebuild the whole thing? Basically, well, take care of the leak, uh, but from what I'm told, it really needs to be torn out. Uh, a number of different people need to be involved. I need a plumber. I need a tile master. I need... Uh, uh, a couple other kind of sub subcontractors. No, you need Peacock and Company. <laughs> <laughs> We've got all of it. No, I I know what you're talking about. It sounds like the base is going to have to be torn out. There's not a membrane uh, layer in between someplace, and the the drain itself is probably leaking or has leaked and forced uh, some decay in that shower base. You're going to need a a plumber and a good carpenter or a carpenter that can uh, who can actually do. Kyle work just like uh, Kyle. Yeah. He can do the whole thing. So if Paul would come to you and say, okay, you know, I've got this problem, uh -huh. uh, and again, whether it's Scott or Brian or Jennifer, whoever wants to jump in, um, what do you do with Paul? You sit down and you say, I need to come see your house? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First step is inspect it. Yeah. And then, then what? Then we'd probably take our plumber out and our estimator out and uh, evaluate it, and our plumber would tell us what his thoughts are, and then we'd come up with a bid. On a job like that, it uh, sounds like you might have to tear out the, the floor that's in there. He mentioned it was mm -hmm. Terrazzo. Right. Uh,